Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration and Crastorio 2 for part 2 of this week's update. And yeah, we'll start off with some of the issues that we've been having down here on Norvis that I was hinting at yesterday. So, um, I noticed that uh, we, one, of my, one of my builds down here on Norvis wasn't actually happening and it turned out it was because of a lack of red inserters. So I followed the trail back and went, okay, so why don't we have any red inserters? Okay, we don't have any inserters. Why don't we have any inserters? We don't have any small electric motors. Why don't we have any small electric motors? There's none on the belt. There's none on the bus. What's going on here? And I traced it back up to, to here <clears throat> where the electric motors are made. And it turns out that for some reason our electric, our, the, um, the belt that's supposed to be full of copper is full of, well, basically everything else. We seem to have some medium electric poles. We've got a load of solar panels. We've got lots of filters, more solar panels. Generally, this... This is not what it's supposed to look like. Um, it turns out that the reason this has happened is because we've got these um, these yellow chests up at the beginning of the bus, and the idea is they look like this. They'll work as a sort of as a buffering system where some of the material will go into them. It'll be it, um, and but then it and uh, and then be passed out. So we control here how much goes in. So if there's less than a hundred in. I don't know where that's wired to. It doesn't seem to be wired to anywhere. This. None of this is finished. It's just, that's just even worse. Okay, so no wonder all this is broken. Um, the idea is that the uh, the copper flows into the top of here. We have a certain amount of copper in there, um, and it acts as a bit of a buffer. So we and, and also because it's set up with a logistics filter on it, any random other copper plates that are released into the system on Norvis will be flown over and put into this chest. However, this one has not been set up like that. It doesn't have the logistics filter, which means it's just filled up with nonsense, um, and which is now then flowed out onto the belts over here and filled up the and, and, and filled up the copper supply. So that's why there's all of this junk on the on the copper belts and at some point we're going to have to get this we're going to have to clean this up because it's just going to stop the entire it's, it has in fact stopped the entire factory from running so that's unfortunate hopefully there's actually somebody down on the planet who can deal with it otherwise we're going to be pu pulling up a lot of belt and replacing it which is not ideal but um i mean it's something we can manage if we had to i did wonder if it was because the uh, the warehouses of shame over here had overflowed but no there's still quite a lot of space space in them both so i think it is just simply down to us not having had a proper filter on the on the on the uh, chest over here. Now, what we should actually be doing is using green chests. These are buffer chests, and in these ones, they act just as a chest. Except, except logistics bots can take stuff away from them if, they, if it's needed, and they can, and you can program it in what's needed down here. So we're trying to make, basically trying to make these into poor man's buffer chests, and it's not worked brilliantly. So that's going to need to be fixed. The other problem we ran into, as I think I mentioned, is that we have a, a, a drastic shortage of um, low density structures, as you can clearly tell by the fact that this belt here, probably, yes, this belt here is empty, that we have no low density structures. So we looked into this a bit, and after a brief diversion where we thought it was due to a lack of sulphur, um, which is now seems to have caught up again, it turned out it was actually due to a lack of plastic. Now both of these were due to the same uh, problem initially, in that we didn't, we didn't have enough oil being brought in. So... Um, we do we, now. We do. We seem to have. We seem to have at least yes, a, a reason, a good supply of oil going on set uh, around available here. Uh, so we don't need. We don't need another train to bring some in yet. So we are set. Yeah, set to a train limit of zero. That's fine. We've got, we're okay at the moment, but we we weren't previously. And I think we fixed this by adding initially by just adding in some extra trains, and that was sort of sort of enough. But I think we might have had. We might. Have, it's possible somebody's put in another oil mine. I'm not quite sure. But we did notice that all of the oil mines, the tanks were full. But all of the oil tanks down here in the in the areas that were making plastic and over here where we were making the sulphur, the oil tanks were basically empty. Now these have now these have been topped up again, so it's okay. Okay, but that was the problem, and we have now sorted it out, and things seem see things seem to be working again. But we are still very very short of low density structures. So these are being built over here. It looks like we're having a bit of an upgrade at the moment. So this might be causing some sort of general throughput issues. Um, I also note that we've run out of whatever this is down here. We've run out of. I don't even know what this is. Oh, this is no, this is this is this is not necessary. This is for when we upgrade it later to the uh, to use to, to do something else. But yeah, over here we've got we seem to have all of the inputs we need. But I guess none of the belts yeah none of the belts are running because they're all waiting to be upgraded. Um, so now things are started well starting to vaguely flow. So hopefully we'll start to get the low density structures available again soon, and then we'll be able to start shipping them out onto the bus up to the rocket and sending them sending them up into space again. Um, yes, this is generally generally a bit chaotic at the moment but it does mean the bots are all a little bit busy <laughs> you can you can see you can see the little clusters of them um, huddling around uh, roboports for warmth i mean charge because they they just can't they don't have quite the range that we would like them to anyway so yes that is that is the other big thing that we had a, a massive shortage of 
we also had kind of the opposite. So on the disposal belt, we have a system where um, everything gets brought down. Lots of some stuff gets brought down from space, and it will be dropped onto this disposal belt here. Uh, whether whether it's unloaded, whether it's scrap unloaded from a rocket which lands over here, whether it's an uh, or scrap from anywhere else, or just miscellaneous junk that we wanted to bring back down from space. And so that drops onto this belt. It's sent all the way along here. You, you can see it. Here's, here's all the scrap passing along the belt. And it's starting to have a bit of a problem, as you can see here, because it's going slowly and jerkily. And that means eventually this will probably back up all the way, all the way back to the uh, to wherever it's being produced. So I sort of followed this along here. It turns out it where does it go? Yeah, it comes up here. And it turns out part of the reason we've got this problem is because um, Mark has sent down lots and lots of solar panels in the in the rocket. So the idea, so what we're doing at the moment is we are building the basic solar panels on Norvis, and then we're building the advanced solar panels on Norvis, and then we're shoving them in a rocket, sending them up into orbit. Where we're then upgrading them into the the flat solar panels because that requires the mirrors that you can only make in orbit, and then it seems we're shipping them back down to down to ground again, where they are then put into a purple chest over here, and the bots come along and take them away, and and uh, we are at some point going to build a massive solar farm on Norvis to try and take the edge off our power requirements. So this is kind of working. The problem is that we're also shipping out quite. We're shipping down. No, we're not shipping down any scrap. Sorry, we are uh, we are ship, we are creating a lot of scrap, and we're not processing that quickly enough. The scrap is processed by obviously all of these machines, but they just they, they just can't keep up with it. The the, the the requirements are too high. I mean, I, I could come along here and put. Um, can I do it like this? No, I'd have to use the um, module inserter probably. I, I could fill them all up with, um, with with speed modules like that, and that will help in the short term. It'll make them run quite a lot faster. But I think ideally we would like to put in more recycling facilities, so they can either come down if we move, we can move this across and just extend them down here, down to about here. We could put in a second column of them that runs all the way up here. Although we'd have to relocate this pipe, but that's not going to be too difficult. It could just come across here and then down the, and down the middle here or or link it no, no, linked in at the top of here that would that, that makes sense so bring it across from here and then into the top of there and then this pipe can bring the water all the way down in case it's needed for anything else which i don't think it is so yeah that'd be a nice easy way to fix that um there's another pipe in here as well there's this oil pipe but we, we would need that anyway to an extent for the uh, for the oil processing for the heavy oil that's produced by the recycling machine so yeah i think extending it putting in another column of that will help quite a lot and then obviously splitting the belt down here bringing some more scrap up the other side uh, so yeah, that that will need to be done because at the moment it's a problem, but gradually we'll we'll sort of gradually fix it over time. The reason we've got quite so much scrap now is down to these um, rough data card substrates. Because you've seen up in orbit, we're making massive quantities of the memory cards, and that means you need to ship up enormous quantities of the data substrates, of red circuits, and of copper. And so we've got a system here where we're feeding through all of the um, all of those into this rocket, and this this is the this rocket goes up to this land this landing pad here that's sort of in the middle of the um, in the middle of the recycling area, and has the and has the uh, the circuit board production circuit board, and has the blank memory card production running just below it. So we bring in the uh, bring in the substrates and the and the uh, red circuits and copper ingots that we then chop down into uh, copper plates as when they're required anyway. Feed them that all gets fed down here to be made into the memory cards. Down on Norvis, that means we need a, that's a lot of bots flying through. That means we need an enormous quantity of these data card substrates coming through. And so originally we had this system up here, which was originally using the, the, the basic uh, memory card substrate recipe, which I shall show you in here. This one that uses glass, silicon and iron to make a, a data storage substrate and some scrap. Fine. Um, we then researched the uh, the upgraded recipe, this one, that with, with the rare metal substrate, which takes in two glass, two silicon, two iron and two rare metals to make two data storage substrates. So essentially you're exchanging two rare metals for two glass, two silicon and six iron because it because it makes two of them and it makes it and it makes it so, but the recipe mostly stays the same. So it's a much, much cheaper recipe, especially as we have so much rare metal we don't want to know what to do with. Uh, so Tristan came in at some point in the past, and I, I've probably covered this, but I don't really remember it, and he cobbled in an extra station down here squeezed it in uh, as you can see and then ran the ran these belts up here and managed to then cram some extra belts of rare metals in here um, so I initially I thought well we're not getting the substrates or anything like fast enough so my first for my first trick I took the two that he'd made here and I copied them over to here then spent an inordinate amount of time trying to spaghetti all of the resources in they are sufficiently quick the um, the belts that are going in there uh, I upgraded the belts to red belts as well and they are now more than capable of providing all the resources needed for this area um, <clears throat> But it was a bit of a mess, and it still wasn't remotely fast enough. 
So I thought, well, the, you know what this needs? This needs speed modules, and, we need, and there's no way I'm going to go in and try and edit this to get some beacons in there. So I think it's time to do a complete redesign. So I built a secondary facility down here, and this has, again, one belt, one red belt coming in from each of the inputs that are spaghetti through quite a bit, I have to admit. And then they come through, through here on, on, on blue belts in some places just to get the really, really long undergrounds. We're then feeding those out over here, and we've got. And, and now this this has allowed me to do the design where you have a a speed module. Uh, sorry, now a beacon in the middle full of speed modules, and then the machines around it full of uh, productivity modules. So we're still getting the productivity bonus of uh, plus twenty four percent. So we're using significantly less input resource than we would if we were doing it just without the, without the productivity modules. But instead of instead of that meaning the machines run at a speed of 0.5, we're now able to get the machines to run to a speed of two. So these are literally running four times as fast. Each each individual machine is running four times as fast um, and this seems to actually now be be uh, capable of keeping this the uh, the belt entirely full um, we've got those being merged down here is it oh it's because the rocket is kind of full so we're only dribbling them into the rocket now yeah yeah you can see the light blinking on and off there as they get used up in up uh, used up up in space <clears throat> so this is the, but when the system is running flat out both of these belts run constantly um, and this and then we as we strip out the, uh, the strip out the scrap here and this is why there was so much scrap that needs to be processed to strip out the scrap there and then merge the two belts so all of the um, the date, raw data the uh, rough data substrates flow down here and that gets us basically a blue belt going straight into the side of the rocket which is great that's a fantastic amount of uh, amount of throughput because we need loads and loads of them and so, yeah, this system here is producing about twice as much as this one up here with probably fewer machines. Let's have a, let's have a look. So we've got 64 machines in there and we've got 110 machines in there. So there's slightly more than half the number of machines here and it's producing twice as much. So it is, as I say, literally, it's running four, at four times the speed um, and is much, much smaller. Yes, it's going to be using quite a lot more power. The power consumption of this area down here is going to be significantly more than this area because of all the speed modules. However, the uh, the UPS impact is going to be much lower and the number of advanced modules we have to use is lower as well. So we could, if we wanted to bump the productivity higher over here, we could upgrade all of these modules. And because we'd be using um, 64 times 4 plus the eight, mod eight uh, beacons times eight, that's significantly fewer than the 110 times four that we've got in up here. So it, it gives you some fairly significant savings in modules. It gives you savings in space taken up. And to be honest, I was going to say, and it looks a lot neater as well, but that's just because I've this, this is a fresh build that I've only just made. This one is an, is an old build that had something else cobbled into it and then was botched, had, had, was sort of doubled again in a botched way. So to be honest, the original build up here was, was reasonably good. It, it was fairly neat and tidy. There's not very much I'd change about it. But then it got upgraded twice without being ripped up and, and done again tidily. So that's well, that's why this one is so much nicer. <laughs> but it works well, and it's, it, I think it was worth the time going in and, 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 uh, and doing all of that. And if I did decide that I wanted to have even more throughput, then there's room for another copy of it in down here, um, under, just underneath just underneath the uh, the current one. Before uh, or or we could rip out this, and there'd be room for at least I reckon well one we could put one over here one here and then I reckon we could fit a third one in in the same sort of area by looping it back on itself and if we got really desperate we could put more another one in on the side over here um, I don't think we need that sort of level of making these things at the moment but it shows you how much how much of an advantage there is to build building in a slightly more compact way especially when you when you're in an area that's already fairly built up actually then now as I look zoom out a little bit there's quite a lot of space up here but you know we might want to expand the blue circuit production or the red circuit production at some time at some point who knows? Or again, maybe that should just all be a complete redesign so we can um, use sp speed and productivity modules properly with the beacons. This is incidentally where I noticed that I wasn't getting any uh, any red inserters, and so th that means that we've got a, a chunk at the end here that isn't working. Speaking of upgrades and things on Norvis, well, Tristan has boosted the uh, the battery production. Which sort of battery was it? Um, just normal batteries, I think. So maybe that's up here. Okay, that's through, through a belt upgrade. He's presumably upgraded all of the belts to red ones, and then I guess he's doubled the number of um, number of machines in here. So that's um, going to be giving us twice as many batteries because presumably we we're running out of them. That seems very reasonable. Ah, he sorted out the the rocket signal part. So over here, yes, I, I talked about this this area where we're using the uh, the triaxle system. Here we go. Here's a 
Oh dear, something's something's gone wrong here. That's um, that's very interesting. Um, a, a copper train has dropped off some copper ingots, and it hasn't immediately flowed through one of these pipes. So clearly something has gone wrong with the wiring or up in Norway. I, I, I don't really know. But in theory, this should then flow th straight through one of these. I wonder which one it is that's short. I'm I'm not going to look into it because it would take me a bit too long. But that's it. That's quite interesting. Uh, we'll have to ask Tristan to have a look at that next time and find out why that hasn't worked. He's also in the progress of tidying away the excess rocket silos that we had scattered around here because they were a bit of a mess. And he's been trying to do that in a reasonably tidy way by um, by launching each rocket once and then um, uh, to, so you don't have a load of rocket parts and so on left in there then pumping all the fuel out of them so if we look in this one we'll see that um, oh, and it's still got quite a lot of liquid rocket fuel so we need to pump all that out into here and then into all into the other rocket silos the two that are still being used and then eventually these two can be ripped up and thrown away or moved away um, the, pro the thing is he doesn't want to waste any of the rocket parts or any of the rocket fuel so we're waiting until it's all got pumped back out again by the uh, well, by the pumps <laughs> and then we can then we can start to use them again uh, then we start to use the space again for something else potentially He's increased barrel production for sending stuff up to uh, fluids to, uh, to Norbit. So we, to, we touched on this last week where I've, I've got all these delivery cannons along here that are lobbing um, the, all the various different fluids into, into orbit. It turns out we're using them up at such a rate that the two machines I put in down here couldn't keep up with the uh, with the barrel production. So Tristan has simply tripled it. We now have six machines producing barrels and they are easily capable of keeping up. In normal use, two is absolutely fine. But once again, I, th I suspect it's probably this one where we're just trying to ship enormous amounts of lube up to, to fill that station up. And that's probably what caused the problem. But talked about that yesterday and he's also boosting the low density circuit production uh, sorry low density circuit low density structure production over here oh, this is all finished now so these should now be running a bit quicker a bit more effectively um, we did this does need an upgrade to be honest because um, at the moment yeah we've got more inputs because all of the belts have been upgraded to blue belts which means yes there's more more uh, resources flowing in there for all the machines should be able to run as fast as they can uh, except these ones up here that don't seem to be for some reason why are you sad Get over, you've not got any steel oh right um because we've not got any red inserters, that's why. Uh, he's also extended upwards a little bit here as well to fill, to fill the space as much as possible. So this will increase the amount of low density structures we get once everything's ready. Um, but in the meantime, we've got uh, some, some, some seething problems over here. <laughs> but eventually, yes, a lot more a lot more low density structures to solve to solve that problem. Uh, but this is only going to be a temporary fix, which is why he's sort of just botched it together a bit like that. Because, because if we if we look at the low density structures, there's there's a couple of ways to make them. You can make them th this this way, the way we're doing at the moment, where you make them out of loads of plastic, a bit of steel, and a load of copper. But we're running, we're having, str we're struggling a little bit with plastic. Alternatively, there's this recipe where you use uh, a less plastic, a bit, a bit of glass, a bit of steel. Um, so same amount of steel, but a lot less plastic and glass instead. But you also need aeroframe scaffold. And my first thought was, oh yeah, that's great. We'll use aeroframe scaffold. Though they're 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 easy. It's just beryllium and beryllium again. But it turns out no. <laughs> in, uh, K in in Crastorio, or possibly in 0.6, I'm not quite sure which, you need you, you need the aeroframe poles, which are made out of the oh, an iron stick now to go into those, as well as a beryllium plate. So you, you wrap the beryllium around the, aer around the iron stick, presumably. So that's a bit of an extra faff. But mostly, you also need cryonite and immersium plates. So that's going to be... This is going to be difficult. Um, we we don't really have enough immersium for this at the moment, so I think we're we're going to stand. We're going to take a step back on this idea for a little while until we until we have a, bit, a slightly better supply of these things going on, and then maybe we will switch over to this recipe because it is it is fewer things going into it, I think. Um, but we'll need to have a bit of a think about try and work out which is going to be the more expensive uh, method of the two. Um, but in the meantime, this will probably work, and if it's if it's not enough, we could just build another version another copy of this or we could build out into this lake up here i'm sure we're not short of landfill meanwhile mark has been working on defenses and power and power is sort of defenses so there was there were some problems up here in the northwest i think uh where, where where there's some repairs were needed i saw some damage happening to the walls down here early, not down here somewhere over on the western front i'm not i'm not actually sure where it was but i got i got some alert messages when i was recording the previous part of the video and i have to say oh no it was no that was on big Rid. never mind <laughs> um he's also put in some um solar panels up Oop, not that far up, over here. Uh, he's put in a this is new. That's helpful of him. So yes, he's put in a load, a load of solar over here. So now, if we look at the the power generation uh, over the last ten hours, uh, you can see here we go. These are the uh, the spikes from the solar solar panels coming in here. Uh, this is when I started cheating and turned on, turned the lights on permanently for recording videos. So we'll ignore that bit. But over here, you can see the solar kicking in and out, and that means that the uh, the gas power stations spike up and down in in. Uh, in equivalence to that and that means we're releasing less pollution which doesn't really matter because i think the biters have evolved as far as they're going to but it feels like a good thing anyway and we're hoping this might help a little bit with the ups problems but for now it's kind of hard to tell i guess we'll uh, we'll find out later but we are producing a decent amount of power from the uh, from the solar uh, although 
it's 600 megawatts, but that's out of the whole four, four and a half, four point seven gigawatts that we're uh, we're using at the moment. So, still some room for growth there. I I suspect this is probably not going to be entirely valid and useful, but it, may, it might help a little bit. You never know. Ah, we, as I was saying, that maybe there's another oil mine. Yes, uh, Mark has added in an additional oil mine somewhere over to the west. Uh, might be might be that one. Probably is that one. Uh, so that's going to get us some more oil, obviously, uh, and that's 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 that might be again part of the reason why when I tried to show you the shortages of sulphur and and, uh, and plastic, it turns out there's plenty of it there because we've now got loads and loads of trains carrying it around and loads and loads of places digging it, digging the uh, the oil up. So we now have yeah we seem to have a plentiful supply of that once again. I believe that covers everything I have to talk to you about on um, down on Norvis because well. Um, there's, we've got to the point where there's not so much happening. There's a new uranium mine up here. I don't know how new that is. <laughs> um, we've got to the point where there's not so much happening down on Norvis because it's mostly just it's now there just to supply resources up to the space station, like all the other planets. And so there's there's a lot less a lot less to talk about. But uh, we can, we can have a quick look around at some of the other planets. That, like for example, on Agnea, Tristan's put in an additional uh, glass delivery cannon over here that's uh, being prioritised. Um, as the yeah, as, as the top priority at the moment, by the way. Um, no, second priority because we've got the being going. Oh, I don't know. It's going. It's going this way for being sent to Norvis orbit. It's going this way to also be sent to Norvis orbit, but somewhere else. Um, and this one's this one's been prioritised over this one, which is just sending it down to Norvis, where in theory we have absolutely plenty of oil. There's not actually that much of it flowing through there. Mm. Uh, so yeah, this is this is shipping it over for one of one of his science things. I wouldn't like to tell you which one. And very very similarly, li 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 li, over on Kothar. He's put in an iridium cannon in here. One of these iridium cannons is firing the iridium up to his mirror construction area. Oh, sorry. The glass was for the mirrors, and so is the iridium. Both of these are being fired over to the mirror construction area, and we're going to be making lots and lots of um, lots and lots of uh, mirrors up there from these resources, because it's a bit more efficient if you can use the iridium for it. Similarly, similarly uh, over on Njord, I've done something. I've, I've put in an additional cannon over here. This one is now shipping it over to the uh, the energy science production area in the science park. So that's shipping it over to be chopped up into the plates in this machine. You can just about make out of the bottom of here, and that then goes down into being made into the in, in, into the science packs. And then let's have go out, go out to Big Rid next because Mark has been doing some stuff there. And out here, he's fixed a problem where the Vitamilange extract was being blocked by light oil production. So basically, he's put in, he's put in a tank here to, to to buffer all the light oil that's being produced. Um, that's that's then being turned into sulfur and sulfuric acid. Ah, and here we go. Yes, that's been combined with the cryonite here and some iron, uh, making sulfuric acid to make the cryonite slush to make the. Uh, the, what, what do you call it? Gas, uh, methane gas. That presumably he's then going to use here to ship over to his biological science area, where he's going to need quite a lot of methane. Uh, so he's got 1.7 thousand in here, plus whatever's sitting on the belt here. So that's going to, it's going to give him a little bit of a, a little bit of it to play with. And then once he starts using the Vita Melange or the Vita Roast, is this Vita Melange Spice? Once he starts using that as well, it'll cause all his machines over here to kick back in again. He'll produce a bit more methane gas. But I strongly suspect he's not going to be producing the methane gas as fast as he needs to, as he's going to need it for for the uh, for the doing the biological science just from using this up. So we're probably going to have to go out to um, an asteroid belt and find another supply of methane gas at some point. But you know that's a thing we can do if we have to. He's also put more emersite processing on Taisha Kuten. So over here, in fact, this has been made even bigger. So this this belt is now looped around the top and come back down again, and we've got another belt to carry it around here. So now, hopefully. Okay, well, we have a full supply of the immersite plate or immersion plate, and quite a lot of the immersite crystals. Which is, but that has stopped for some reason. Why have you stopped? What are you missing? You are missing. You are missing immersion sulfide, which comes from here, and you are missing. You're missing crushed immersion. Oh, the sand has backed up completely. So this sand that comes down here and down here and down here and is fed into this warehouse. Um, has filled up the warehouse and everything is ground to a halt. Uh, that's then supposed to be shipped out here as of here in glass, as glass, because we I don't have it being shipped out in any way in any any cleverer forms at the moment. And we seem to have run out of delivery cannons. So I suspect what has happened is we've shipped out so much immersite by delivery by delivery cannon over here, and this pro, and this um, priority has been set up here. That that means the whole system is ground to a halt um, because we, we shipped out so much immersite that we've used up all of the um, all of the. Uh, delivery cannon capsules they've not been feeding all of these guns over here so things like this the glass supply has backed up uh, causing the sand to back up causing the sand to back up all the way up here and causing the immersite to stop so um yes well done there this does this mean we've also stopped shipping out the um yes this also means we've stopped shipping out the vulcanite because we don't have room to cram any more well, why why is that stopped actually all ah, right, so yeah, we can't we can't get rid of the stone from here. So that might that might yes, that's jammed this up, which means we don't have any of the oh dear. 
Yes, so this is all ground to a halt, which is rather unfortunate. And this is also one of the older systems, which doesn't have the delivery cannon chest in the middle. So we can't send over some extra supplies in order to make more delivery cannon capsules. This is problematic. Um, I think for now, I'm just going to point at this and say this is a problem and not do anything about it for now because um, we'll, have, we'll have to sort that out in the next video, in the next in the next stream, I think, because that is a, a fairly severe is issue there. And we might be able to fix it just by putting in um, something to store this extra glass or by putting in something to store the excess sand or ship the sand off to, to Njord or somewhere else. Which it needs to be got rid of somehow. But the problem is at the moment we are we are just using up the delivery cannon capsules far too quickly for the Immer site and not saving enough for the Vulcanite in order to keep the system running. Oh, and certainly not saving enough to send them around here in order to keep these delivery cannons going as well. Um, I'm slightly surprised there's no... Um... Oh no, of course, the core chunks are coming in here. They've jammed up because this is jammed up so that we can't get any more core chunks through. So there aren't any core chunks, fl so there aren't any core chunks flowing down here to, to make more um, delivery cannon capsules. Oh, that's a mess. Oh well, I mean, this is where the fun comes from. We'll, um, I guess we'll sort this out later. And there's, there's plenty of spare ones in here. We just need to get them to the right place. Mm -hmm. Okay, well let's not worry about that planet anymore. Let's have a quick look at Kothar because Mike's done some finishing off over here. So he's, he's added in uh, some more iridite mining. As you can tell by his um, rather loud notes up here, he's put in some new, new stuff up here. So we've got uh, another iridite mine and another another iridite mine feeding up into two separate stations uh, with a single sulfuric acid emptying station uh, drop station up here. And that's giving him a nice big supply of um, immersite, which means that down here, down here, we have now it's, it's now flowing through the system as fast as it can be dropped off. So the limiting factor is now uh, no longer the rate the immer, the, the immer site is coming in. We're now limited by let's see. So it's limited by the rate of this this these belts are full as well. So over here these ones are not. So okay we're limited by the rate we're processing it over here, which appears to be so this this machine has got see this machine has got an excess of an output. Uh, too much too much of the iridium powder. What? Oh, okay, so this belt down here is full on the outside because we're trying to, too busy trying to recycle the... Ah, I see. Yeah, so we're trying to recycle the um, crushed immersite back around here, but it's not really making it because of the way the, uh, the belts are set up. But that said, I mean, we are producing a decent amount of immersite powder around here. It's going into these machines, being cooked into the blast cake, and then being cooked into immersite, and we've got this steady stream pouring down these, these belts over here. I say that with a slight amount of flippancy, but if we look at the production stats, we are making crazy amounts of immers immersite uh, compared to what we're using. So if let's search for ingot, uh, go back over the last hour. <clears throat> there it is. We're making we're making 2,700 an hour, and we're using 13. Point, uh, sorry, 40, we're making yeah we're making 2,700 per hour, and we're using 7 800 per hour. So we seem to have quite a lot more, or 45 to 13 per minute. We seem to have rather a lot more being made than we, we're using up. So that's good. That means we have room for expansion. Uh, the other other materials might not be quite as uh, doing quite as well. So the beryllium is well, the beryllium is being made at 6.3 per minute and used 18 point per minute. So nope, that's going to run out at some point soon. <clears throat> the holmium is being made at 12 per minute and being used at 24 a minute. So again, that might run into some issues at some point in the future. But we've got some fairly big buffers of those, so it'll be at least a little while until we start to have actual problems. But we are definitely going to need to go out and ex expand the beryllium processing. But I've, I've talked about that before. I'm not going to mention it again. Um, in order to keep his, this, his throughput of the um, iridium coming in, he's also put in an, a stacker up here uh, where he's got his iridite train stacking so they can nip fairly quickly from here down to the station down here to unload, which is more than fast enough, especially when it's running at this sort of speed, uh, rather than having to come all the way from whatever mine they've been at. Uh, that's his other, this is new on the map. <laughs> so there we go. I've talked about everything that Mike has done over here. And then finally he left. He brought the spaceship back over, the, the misfortune, and flew back to Norvis orbit in order to make a start on the material science production. So well done there. Right, that brings us on to the uh, part of the video where I talk about how many deaths we've had in the last in the last run, in the last stream, and uh, this time people have done remarkably well. We've not had any deaths at all. Uh, so since uh, basically Mike has stopped doing combat, we're all we're all hiding up in Norvis orbit. I think. Oh no, I think Mark might be on Norvis itself. But we're all hiding in, in safe places. So it's um, suddenly there's there's not very much combat going on, which means we seem to be we seem to be doing slightly better at surviving. So that's 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 gone quite well. <laughs> Uh, and so that brings us to the end of the video. Uh, please check out the channel sponsor, that's trefoil.be. If you use the code LawrencePlays on checkout, then you can get 20% off your uh, first month, and they will host a Factorio or a Minecraft or whatever else server for you. Uh, come back on Monday, where we'll be carrying on with the stream, 7.30pm UK time, uh, solving all of the problems I've been pointing at in this stream, um, because everything seems to be breaking at the moment. 
and then hopefully if that goes well we'll then be able to carry on with some more science afterwards uh, Wednesday I shall be streaming some XCOM so that's the classic XCOM from 1994 if you'd like to come along and have a soldier named after you to go out and fight the alien menace come along there and, and uh, throw your name into the hat uh, pension options are great but survivability options are perhaps not quite so great uh, then on Thursday there'll be a GTA video Friday, Saturday we'll have these catch up videos again and who knows, maybe I'll try and squeeze in some extra ones uh, as, as well so make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on anything thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time bye bye